not have any problem joining me in giving the Prime Minister David Cameron a very warm welcome indeed. Frank Hester has been around Tory leaders for years, but became a giant donor under Rishi Sunak's leadership. It got him a prime seat for Rishi Sunak's conference speech, but his remarks, as reported by The Guardian, have been widely condemned. We could do with some more peace in the world. The Guardian alleged that Frank Hester in 2019 told a meeting at his company's Yorkshire headquarters that he tried not to be sexist when criticising a bad woman executive, but it's like trying not to be racist, that you see Diane Abbott on the TV and you're just like, I hate, you just want to hate all black women because she's there. And I don't hate all black women at all, but I think she should be shot. Friends of Diane Abbott said she'd reported the comments to the police parliamentary liaison and investigations team. And in a statement, Diane Abbott said, it is frightening. I live in Hackney. I don't drive, so I find myself at weekends popping on a bus or even walking places more than most MPs. I am a single woman and that makes me vulnerable anyway. But to hear someone talking like this is worrying. I feel scared for Diane. I hope that Diane is getting enough support. We've reached out to Diane and other people have reached out to Diane, including other Conservative MPs. And I'm thankful for those MPs for calling out, but what we need to see is the Prime Minister distance himself from these remarks and cut all ties with Mr Hester. We need people who can be fearless and confident. The Prime Minister did not cut all ties with Frank Hester, and the businessman himself issued a statement saying, Frank Hester accepts that he was rude about Diane Abbott in a private meeting several years ago but his criticism had nothing to do with her gender nor colour of skin. That formulation was carefully echoed by a cabinet minister sent out for interviews. I think the critical point here is I don't think what he was saying was a gender-based or a race-based uh, comment, but it was clearly inappropriate. He has apologised and I think uh, we need to move on from that. And I'm sorry, this apology this morning that is pretending that what was said wasn't racist or anything to do with the fact she's a woman. I don't buy that, I'm afraid, and I think that it's time the Tory party called mm. it out and returned the money. Right now we're exploring new opportunities in Africa, Southeast Asia and the Americas. The Conservative Party intends to hold on to the £10 million Frank Hester donated. Mr Hester's statement said that he rang Diane Abbott twice today to try to apologise directly for the hurt he has caused her and is deeply sorry for his remarks. He wishes to make it clear that he regards racism as a poison which has no place in public life. Friends of Diane Abbott At say she time, twice MP made it clear on her mobile she didn't want to talk to Frank Hester. This documentary from two years ago showed how Diane Abbott's staff regularly open offensive posts from the public. Clearly someone's taken a lot of time to, you know, cut out images of Diane and some really serious racism, sexism. It's just quite grotesque. Diane Abbott herself has had the Labour whip suspended for a year after the leadership accused her of downplaying anti-Semitism with deeply offensive language. The NHS has been falling apart for an awful long time and I think it's worse than most people know. Frank Hester speaking to Japanese TV last year. Tonight, some in the party, he supports, including the business secretary, Kemi Badenoch, said the language reported by The Guardian should be called out as racist. Gary Gibbon is at Westminster now. Gary, what a day. Well, something's just broken in the last uh, few minutes. The line that Downing Street were trying to put out there has not held. It's broken, and we now have a statement from... Uh, the Prime Minister's uh, spokesman saying uh, that the Prime Minister believes the comments by Frank Hester were racist and wrong, the language uh, that they've been avoiding uh, all day. Uh, uh, but, they say, he has rightly apologised for the offence caused. I think what was happening was that the, they could see a problem uh, even worse than today's one coming towards them, and that's Prime Minister's questions tomorrow, uh, when they were going to be challenged about their defence uh, of the language, you can bet and they weren't sure that uh, they would be able to withstand that challenge. It's interesting that Kemi Badenoch, the business secretary, came out with a formulation pretty similar to the one that Number 10 have ended up with uh, a, a little earlier in a tweet, not entirely helpful, some might uh, argue. Uh, she'd, as, as it were, got there earlier 
than them. There will be some question marks uh, yet again next to the judgment of the Prime Minister and his team. Did they really think they could hold the line by not calling that particular language, as reported by The Guardian, uh, racist uh, language? And it has distracted attention today from some other stories, like the earlier pris early prison uh, release uh, story, but I don't think you can uh, attribute that to anything like good judgment lurking inside number 10. So that question mark, uh, I think, why did it take them so long? But they probably have avoided uh, an even messier uh, question time tomorrow than the one they were possibly heading for. Gary, thanks very much. Well, Frank Hester turned down our request for an interview, as did the Conservative Party and Downing Street. I spoke to the Labour MP Dawn Butler before Downing Street accepted that the comments are racist. I first asked for her reaction to the original remarks. Those alleged remarks were deeply offensive. They showed a deep-seated racism from him and it highlights his, his privilege, his sense of entitlement, that he doesn't really have to uh, apologise for the fact that he's so deeply racist. Uh, we see Downing Street and a number of ministers who come out today to say his comments are unacceptable, they're uncomfortable, but they're not racist. What do you think they are trying to achieve here? Well, I've seen some of them walking around the corridors of Parliament today and they look a little bit sheepish. They know it's racist. And at the end of the day, racism is uncomfortable. Talking about racism is uncomfortable. But do you know what's more uncomfortable? When you have to suffer racism. That is what is more uncomfortable. That causes me discomfort. So, actually, if he can't own his racism, if the prime minister can't call out his racism, then there's something deeply wrong uh, within our democracy and deeply wrong in number 10. I mean, what do you think should be done about specifically about these comments? Um, and, and what should the government be saying about this, in your view? So there's a couple of things that needs to be done. Number one, the prime minister and all of the ministers, they need to accept that it's racist. That's the thing. Two, he's given the Tories a load of money £10 million, that needs to be returned, unless the Prime Minister is happy taking money from a racist. Three, this uh, merry-go-round of the government giving companies public money, you and I's money, and then that company making donations to the Conservative Party, that needs to change, because it's been exposed and it needs to change. And, I mean, and the other thing that needs to happen, sorry, is that all of his contracts needs to be rescinded. I mean, the Shadow Health Secretary, Wes Streeting, was quick today to stand up in the Commons and talk about Labour, Labour's revulsion at these comments, but the Labour Party don't have clean hands here either, do they? The Ford report, just a couple of years ago, exposed what it called anti-black racism within the Labour Party, including awful messages about Diane Abbott specifically, Labour officials expressing, in inverted commas, visceral disgust about her, referring to her in WhatsApps as repulsive. There's a problem in Labour, isn't there, too? Well, this is why it's important to call it out, because if you don't, then what you're actually doing is you're saying to people, it's OK to discriminate, it's OK to bully someone or call somebody's names... Because it's not you, enough to because, call it because, out, is because, it? It's not enough to call it out. The Labour Party was slow to act, but the Labour Party has acted. You know, I'm not here condoning it. That's not what I'm doing here. What I'm doing here is saying, if we want to make a difference, if we want to move the dial on the racism that exists in this country, then we have to accept that it happens, we have to call it out, and then we have to act accordingly. And right now, the Prime Minister's not acting accordingly. Are you confident, as a black woman in the Labour Party, that it is now moving quickly enough on this issue? Because Diane Abbott said just last year the Labour Party still hadn't properly apologised to her about the racism and she suffered from within the Labour Party itself. And, and I think that Diane's absolutely right. She hasn't had an apology. I haven't had an apology. So when I've said this before quite publicly, I am very consistent uh, because it means a lot to me. This is who I am and this is what I fought uh, my whole life fighting against racism and discrimination. And yes, the, party has, the Labour Party has to do better. Um, that, is, that goes without saying the Labour Party has to do better. But the Prime Minister is the leader of our country. And if he can't call out racism, 
then he shouldn't be the Prime Minister of our country because his first job is to keep all citizens safe and he's not keeping us safe. Uh, Diane Abbott herself is currently suspended for writing a letter which was deemed to be racist, something she has apologised for. Now, the Labour leader said today he supports her he, in, in terms of the terrible uh, alleged remarks made about her. Should he now welcome... Should Keir Starmer now welcome her back into the party? Is it time? I think Diane deserves to have the whip returned. Yes, we have a process and a system. Sometimes you have to go on a learning path, and that's OK if you own it. Frank has not owned what he's done. He's trying to excuse it, and that is a huge difference. And so don't conflate the two. I think it's dangerous to conflate the two. This story, how does it resonate with many black women across the country? It's painful. It's absolutely painful, and it's triggering. And it's what we hear all the time, because what you're essentially saying is, you don't want to see us. That's what, that's what you're essentially saying. And everybody who's having this debate that wants to make excuses or deny it or not confronting it, that's what you're actually saying. Dawn Butler, thank you very much for talking to us today. Thank you.